check this out. String theory got its start in the 1960s, over 60 years ago. That's when string theory really got going. And it got going from a technique that was actually developed in the 1940s, and they were trying to apply it to the strong nuclear force. And as they started digging into the mathematics and poking around and, you know, seeing like what's under here and what's over there, they found strings. They found little loops. These little loops, these little strings were, were the carriers of the strong nuclear force in this theory. But what does it mean for a, a, a little string to, to carry a force. Well, imagine you just have a little, you know, a little loop of wire and it vibrates. Be, why does it vibrate? Because quantum mechanics says at very tiny scales, nothing can stay still. Everything's always going to vibrate you're, you're, or wiggle or jiggle or do something, hop around. You're never going to stay still. So that thing's going to vibrate. And look at the simplest possible case. Uh, say you have a loop, a little string, and it's vibrating a certain way that represents a certain amount of energy. Well, a certain amount of energy means a certain amount of mass because e equals mc squared. Uh, but if that string vibrates with more energy, then it will have more mass. Ah, so you can have strings with different frequencies, each representing different amounts of mass and different amounts of energy. And these strings can move around space-time. That kind of looks like a particle, right? Because particles are little packets, things of energy that move around space-time, and strings are just little things of energy that move around space-time. So, you know, it's, it's not so different than a particle, right? So these strings were the first attempt, or the first appearance of strings, and they were used to try to explain the strong nuclear force. And the different properties of the strings, the different ways they vibrated, gave rise to different properties of the strong force, like uh, the range and how it would connect to other particles. Like they're, they're trying to put the pieces together of how this string theory actually worked. This early string theory, this 1960s string theory, <clears throat> It, it didn't really work. It was starting once they got the mathematics good enough to start making predictions. The predictions weren't matching what we were seeing for the strong nuclear force inside of particle colliders. Uh, and then at, on the other hand, people who weren't working on strings, who were working on traditional methods of quantum field theories started proposing things like quarks and fractional charges. And this ended up being really, really successful and really, really powerful and predictive in explaining how protons work and neutrons work, how they smash together and how gluons work and all this. Uh, this eventually became quantum chromodynamics, which is our quantum theory of the strong nuclear force. And that remains our quantum theory of the strong nuclear force today. This early 1960s string theory just didn't work. It was making a little bit wrong predictions. And as people were exploring and poking around inside this theory, they found that this theory, this model, this string theory of the strong nuclear force also predicted the existence of tachyons. Tachyons are particles that travel faster than the speed of light, and you can't travel faster than the speed of light. So if your theory comes out and it busts out the doors and said, hey, everyone, tachyons exist, everyone's just like, oh, why did you, why did you say that, string theory? You were so good for so long, and then you had to go and say that tachyons exist. Now we can't be friends. Now I can't be seen in public with you. Do you know what you just did? <sighs> Tachyons don't exist. We don't observe them. They violate special relativity, and we've, special, we've tested special relativity like crazy. Tachyons don't exist. So if your theory says that tachyons exist, mm, it's kind of hard to buy into the theory. So this 1960s version of early string theory just kind of fell apart. But there were some interesting things tucked inside of there. Uh, besides the whole tachyon business, uh, people found that you can have different kinds of strings. And so maybe this theory was a little bit more flexible than we first thought. Maybe it could be expanded beyond the strong nuclear force. 
but quantum chromodynamics was so successful, it just drowned it out. It was making some off-base predictions. It had tachyons. It just, people just weren't really buying it. And there was one interesting thing that I'm going to explore next week in this early version of string theory. In order to make it work, in order for the strings to be strings and actually do their stringy thing, uh, they didn't live in our four-dimensional space-time. They had to live in a universe with 26 dimensions. What does that mean? But that's exactly where I'm going to pick up next week of how string theory, starting with this early proto-string theory in the 1960s, required our universe to have extra dimensions and whatever that means. Because as far as I can tell, our universe doesn't have 26 dimensions. So what's going on, string theory? I will see you next week. Please consider contributing to Patreon. That's patreon.com slash pmsutter. And liking, sharing, and subscribing. And you know what? Just having a nice day in all of your 26 dimensions. And I'll see you next week.